are here at AES 2006, and we are with Henry Hein from Bag End. Bag End is uh, here to talk about some of their fabulous speaker products. Henry, why don't you tell us about the MM8? All right, we, line. We, this is our possibly the best loudspeaker that we make. We, we individually calibrate each one and keep uh, frequency response curves on them. Uh, it's a studio monitor that is designed to be uh, a near field monitor or a main monitor. It has plenty of headroom to work as a main monitor. It's a uh, passive crossover network. It has uh, a few features that make it uh, really ideal for uh, a recording engineer. One is it's a uh, it's a uh, coaxial speaker. The high frequency driver is behind this dust cap right here. It's in there, so that it has uh, its off-axis response is the same from top to bottom or left to right. So you can put it upside down or sideways and fit it in. Interesting. And uh, and that's a nice feature. It also has a uh, an equalizer on the treble driver so that depending on which part of the process you're in, for example, if you're doing uh, tracking before there's any you know, recording at all, and you're sitting close to the speaker, you'll want to put this in the, in the uh, le least bright position because you're looking at uh, uh, an unrecorded signal and you're very close to the loudspeakers. And that will be a brighter signal than down the chain, things get a little duller, even in digital uh, recording process. Interesting. As things get reproduced. Um, and also, the air is a high frequency attenuator. So, when you step back, or if your clients are behind you and you're listening to the finished product, you'll want to turn it to a brighter setting because the air, you'll compensate then for the air and that uh, final product. It's interesting. And there's a polarity switch, really useful if you're flying in things that were recorded in another studio, for example. We put a polarity switch on it so you can check the polarity of it, like if you've got stereo uh, uh, tracks that you're flying in or, or some other sort of uh, samples or whatever. Uh, this is, makes it real easy to check the polarity of that. And uh, of course, this is not where you would correct the polarity on your recording. You do that in your software or on your mixing console. But, uh, um, that's just another tool for the engineers. This is sort of like, you've seen probably people put tissue paper over some monitors because they sound bad. Yes. Well, well, this is like a switch that actually does it with an equalization circuit. And in case you don't have Kleenex. Yeah, and right. <laughs> Not that you need it. And the base reflex enclosure too as well. I've seen the, I've seen, I think you have a model that doesn't have the uh, reflex enclosure, that doesn't have the, the aperture. This particular speaker uses a base reflex um, because we intend this to be used with one of our infra sub subwoofers. Huh. And it doesn't have much base by itself. Where's the cutoff about? About 95 hertz. And uh, uh, one of the, one of the things a speaker designer uh, does is to trade low frequency extension for sensitivity. This thing is very sensitive. You don't need a large amplifier to make it you know, very loud. But it doesn't have any bass. So any speaker that has, any passive loudspeaker, you know, that's not bi amp that has a lot of low frequency extension is not very sensitive. And those are trade-offs that you have to make in, in the design process. We, design, we decided to uh, make this one really sensitive so that you could play it really loud with a smallish amplifier, and then add a subwoofer for that low frequency extension. We make uh, probably the best subwoofers in the world, and uh, we want people to use them in, in the system. You know. Do you think that design decision had to do with facing the home studio or the project studio, or, with it, or to, to, have a, to have a light amplification requirement? Sure, yeah, especially that. I mean, this is not an inexpensive speaker, but uh, it will, uh, it runs with the best of them. And, uh, and we're able to get a, an incredibly powerful system out of a pretty small footprint with this setup. It's, it, don't let its size fool you. It will play really loud. And uh, you probably don't need, if, if uh, you know, to play it back for your clients at, at high levels, this will do the job for that, too. All right. It's a really, really robust system. It's, uh, and if, if one ever got damaged, you know, uh, somehow, 
you can send us a serial number, we keep the curve of this on file and can match a new driver. You know, so you can still get a matched pair, because we sell them in matched sets, two or three or five of them. Not know. just a replacement, a customized replacement. Well, yeah, we look at the curve, and you know, they're they're pretty flat anyway, but there are slight differences, and we try to match them spot on. You know. That's Henry Hyde and Bag Yeah, all right, thanks. Thanks much.